Another cotton mill ends its days, this time through fire, not perhaps an event that would be noticed nationally, but to the people of this East Lancashire community, this is news that may affect them, be it employment or just a little of the past that's gone. Twice a week, this and other items of local interest appear in the pages of Burnley's local paper, The Express. Burnley, in common with many of the other northern industrial towns, has two faces. First, the tired old face of times past. Times when cotton was king. But increasing each year is seen a new face, a face scrubbed clean of the past grime, with renovations of the old and familiar, and fresh scenes of the new and different. The advantage the town has over most of its Lancashire counterparts is its position on the edge of the grey 19th century industrial development, but Burnley has its back firmly to Manchester, looking north to Pendle Hill and beyond to the Yorkshire Dales. The River Ribble, here at Mitten, is only one of the many beautiful places within half an hour's drive from the town centre. A much nearer beauty spot of different character is Hurstwood, which lies within the circulation area of the Express. The other smaller communities the paper serves are just as varied, starting with the Pennine villages on the edge of the moors of Alsyke, Brycliffe, Worsthorne. Hapton to the southwest looks down onto Padium, a small town in its own right. The most westerly village covered by the paper is Reed, set in some quite beautiful parkland. It is then to the people of these places the express caters. Bull Street, Burnley, the home of the paper, from where each week the stories large and small of the area find their way into each edition. Beyond the familiar reception, there's another story, the story of the paper itself. The first thing in every paper must be the news and the way in which it's presented. Governing the way it's presented in the Express is the paper's editor, Mr Keith Hall. The first steps begin towards the actual printing. The linotype operator's job is to turn the newly written articles, or copy as it's called, into lead type on this mechanical wonder, the linotype machine.
A rough impression of proof can now be taken from the newly cast columns of type. The proof is now checked against the original text for any corrections. The proofreading department is only one of a host of smaller units that help turn out the paper. The well-known features editor, Mr. Hallen Alstead. Here is Winifred Bowles, who writes the woman's page. In this office, hundreds of classified adverts are phoned in throughout the week. Circulation, another of the many important jobs essential to run a successful paper. It's said that every picture tells a story. The well-equipped photographic department is installed at the top of the building. Before a photograph can be printed, it has to be engraved into a printing plate, with the familiar little dots making up the picture. This is the paper's art department. The artist's illustrations are engraved in a different way than the photographs we saw. In this method, the plate is etched by acid. When the compositors start to fit together the illustrations and wording into a page, the new edition starts to take shape. Preparation for the printing is now getting underway in the machine room. A fact that always amazes visitors is that each reel of newsprint is five miles long. All the reels shown here will be used up in just one edition. Because the printing is done on a rotary principle, curved plates have to be cast from the now completed pages, or forms as they are called. First, a mould has to be made. After drying, the mould, or to use its proper name, the mat, can now be used to create the printing plate.
One by one, the finished plates take their place on the machine. Start of another issue, births, marriages and deaths. How many has this press recorded in its working life? Soon, a copy of this issue will take its place in the basement. Copies of the paper go back over a hundred years. A town's history, week by week. The old yellowing pages telling the triumphs and tragedies of years gone by. This issue, dated May 23, 1903, records an important day in Burnley history, the opening to the public of the newly acquired Townley Hall. The hall, pride of the town, must have looked much the same then as it does today, only altering with the changing of the seasons. But other familiar landmarks of the town do change or just disappear into memories. The Express 2 is changing, with old methods giving way to new. The liner tax days are already numbered, with their Space Age successors all but ready to take over. Times, of course, always will change, but the heart of any paper must be the people who make it, and the community whose life it reflects. This community is Burnley, and this their paper, the Express.